Welcome to Women on the Rise with hosts Patricia King and Michelle Bouquet. Hello, Women on the Rise. Michelle Burkett here with Patricia King. And today we would like to talk to you about checking in on your spiritual posture. So Patricia, you know, all of our lives, right, we hear about the importance of posture, right? Yeah. Stand up straight, you know, don't slouch. Right. And, you know, we go to chiropractors <laughs> and, you know, do these different yeah. things. We have chairs that flip us upside down, <laughs> all these kinds of things, you know, to work on. Because it's important. Physical posture. Mm -hmm. but more important than yeah. physical posture is our spiritual yeah. posture. And we are in an hour where God is calling every vertebrae of our spiritual posture to come into alignment. And it's vital that yeah. we pay attention to this alignment. So that we can be healthy. Yeah. You know, it works that way in the natural. The natural so often speaks of the spiritual. Mm -hmm. And I know that when I was growing up, um, because I was tall and I grew quickly, mm -hmm. uh, my parents were very strict on me as far as posture. Mm -hmm. And they would make me put books on my head and I'd have to walk around with them to be reminded to keep my my yeah. back straight, you yeah. know, and that's because when your spine is aligned, then all your organs will will be healthier. Mm -hmm. But it's the same in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And uh, this morning, when I was uh, praying, I felt uh, quickened to read Hebrews 12, and it says in verse 12, strengthen the hands that are weak and the knees that are feeble, and make straight paths for your feet, so that the limb, which is lame may not be put out of joint, mm. but rather be healed. Mm. And I was thinking about this whole subject of spiritual posture, mm. and I was thinking it's so easy. Like I remember a number of years ago, I woke up one day, man, and my back, it, I was in so much pain, and I couldn't walk properly. I was all hunched over. I was stiff. I didn't want to move. I was just kind of frozen. And I had to go to a chiropractor who then put things back in alignment. Right. As soon as things were back in alignment, my body could function again. Yeah. And so I believe the scripture shows us um, points that we need alignment. Of course, you know, first of all, before I go into these other points that the Lord showed me, we have to be in Christ. So that's the most important, <laughs> that right? Is, yes. And so even... <laughs> Sometimes, so if as not, believers, your back is broken. That's exactly. It. Yeah. I mean, we're not even alive right. yet, right? right? But I mean, when we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior, mm -hmm. we actually have His life on the inside of us. Yeah. And many times, as believers, we get back into works and try to struggle mm -hmm. to, you know, see ourselves in Him. But no, we are in Him. When He is in us, we mm -hmm. are in Him, mm -hmm. and then we can work that out. Mm -hmm. But He's saying, bring things into a right posture right now. So we've got this crisis almost every day we see more and more crisis around us mm -hmm. in the world and it's probably going to get heavier right. before it gets better right. and so there was four areas of posture the lord spoke to me um, about this morning and the first one was the posture of prayer and it mm -hmm. says in hebrews 12 there strengthen the hands that are weak or I, I i'm sorry worship was the first one uh, strengthen the hands that are weak. And in the Passion Translation, he says, lift up your hands in mm -hmm. worship, right? Mm -hmm. And so when we focus on God in yeah. worship, even though everything else is going on bad, when yeah. we look in his face, at his glory, mm -hmm. what he's given to us, what he's blessed us with, who he is, the greatness of his power and all that, and adore him and remember him, lifting our hands yeah. and surrender to him in worship and in praise, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden we begin to align. That's good, yeah. You know, yeah. And then the second one was prayer. Mm -hmm. And it says here um, that the knees that are feeble mm -hmm. will be strengthened, mm -hmm. right? So one of the things God's really speaking to the body right now is about prayerlessness. He said, mm -hmm. could you not pray, pray even for one hour? Mm -hmm. And of course, we're mentioning over and over and over again yeah. right now to get on the prayer wall right. um, so that we can pray for our nation. So if you're interested in the USA prayer wall, it's uh, uh, prayerwallusa.com. For Canada, it's Canadian, uh, or I'm, I'm sorry, firewallusa.com. Firewall, yeah. For Canada, it's canadianfirewall.ca. I just want to encourage you, whatever nation you're in, find some ministry mm -hmm. that is praying for your nation. It's absolutely important right now uh, because of what God's doing. Mm -hmm. And our prayer failure 
will will bring trouble mm -hmm. to the body as well as the world. Right. So it's very important that we bring this posture, mm -hmm. this prayer posture, into alignment right now. So if you want breakthrough in your family, mm -hmm. breakthrough in your nation, breakthrough in your own personal life, that posture of prayer before God, humbling ourselves before Him and praying is, is, is important. And then the third thing that God spoke to me as far as a posture for this hour, we have to have great expectation for yeah, good things. That's right. And that's hard. Which again is focus. Exactly. Yeah, and that's really yeah. hard when media is telling you everything bad, right? Right, right. So we have to have this expectation that uh, because of who our God is and mm -hmm. our relationship with Him, our posture of worship, our posture of prayer, that we can have great expectation that his kingdom will come, his will mm -hmm. will be done on earth as it is in heaven yes. because he's got a conduit, which is us, to release his power and his glory into the earth. So actually by, by us coming into the posture of great expectation mm -hmm. will actually bring a position for the world to come mm -hmm. into the touch of his power. Yeah. And then the final one was great faith. Mm -hmm. This is no time to be in unbelief. Mm -hmm. There's no time to be in doubt. We have to trust the goodness of our God mm -hmm. for our breakthrough. And if you're praying for your children or your family or your, your nation, we have to pray with great mm -hmm. faith. We can't be, be feeble in that. Right. Um, so he's going to bring our posture before him so that mm -hmm. it's so nice and strong. Mm -hmm. And as we get these things in right alignment, then of course um, the blood flows. Yes, you know, everything. Yes flows well so that's so good yeah and you know what you're saying as far as you know not looking uh, at what the world is saying but continue to hear what God is saying because it's God's word that is eternal it's God's word that will be solid in the midst of anything else in the world that shakes mm -hmm. God's word doesn't shake that's and right. um, I'm I'm reminded something that just continues to go over in me is when Joshua was getting ready to go into battle and he was he came upon a man who had a sword in his hand and he said are you for us or against us <laughs> and the man said neither <laughs> I'm for heaven and it was yeah. the Lord of hosts yeah. and Joshua's response was the appropriate response yeah. to immediately bow before yeah. the king of kings and um, you know and and there was obviously war at hand right because sure. there was a sword in, in in that hand but our posture when there is war and and w women on the rise we are at war and and we and our posture need to have our gaze fixed on not about the politics, the who's, exactly. or you know what this person is saying, or on one side or another. Our side is the kingdom of heaven. That's where our gaze is fixed. That's yeah. where we're listening and leaning into. And yeah. it's not. It's not. Um, taking sides in the natural. Right. I love what you said. Um, you know about that very thing but also it it's not like against flesh and blood right you know it's it's against principalities and powers That's right. and uh, Kevin Zadai uh, recently a little while ago mm -hmm. uh, did a great interview uh, on Sid Roth and he had had a five-hour encounter um, in heaven where the Lord showed him things that were going to happen mm -hmm. in in the earth this fall, according to the time that we are doing this broadcast right now, yes. this fall. Yeah. And uh, it, it is pretty chilling, a lot yeah. of it. But basically, what his message was is to, this is principalities and powers that we have power over. Right. We actually have authority. So when we bring our posture into mm -hmm. alignment, we actually have authority to move mm -hmm. uh, things that are going on in the earth by kicking those forces out of the way. And I just want to say too, if you actually want to watch mm -hmm. that interview, just go on sidroth.org forward slash Kevin. I think it's just really worth watching for all of you intercessors. Um, he talks um, very um, accurate discernment is what I felt in my spirit mm -hmm. concerning things coming with a spirit of faith mm -hmm. in it. Good. You know, yeah, it, it didn't, uh, you know, trigger any fear or mm -hmm. anything. It was just full of faith and redemptive um, threads in it. It was just amazing. Yeah. But I think that, you know, like when we see the captain of the Lord of yes. hosts, who is 
He's not against people. He's not against the politicians right. that we hate. That's right. You know? That's right. He's for them, for, right. for them as people, maybe not their agenda. So he's just going to, whether you're Christian or non Christian, yeah. he's committed to the Father's agenda. That's right. And I think it's so good. That posture is so important. Yeah. And that needs to be our agenda mm -hmm. as well. Exactly. Um, there's a scripture, Philippians 4 1, that says, Arise in the fullness of all of the God that is in you. And Come I paraphrase that a bit. But it's it's lay hold of what what God has said in you, everything that has been placed in you. It is all unto purpose. And this is the hour. Mm -hmm. This is not the hour to cower. This is the hour of power. So, ooh, that was good. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> that was good. So, um, you know, sometimes I, in, in the midst of these things, I have felt such a such a heaviness just like just like weight just pressing down and you know there's a choice that i've had to make in that and and you know the other day i was i was talking to another friend who's also a, a feeler and she was saying you know the same thing and i said okay well here's what's going on here's where we need to place our feet. Here's what posture we need to take. And it is the rising up in the midst of that and pushing back those forces that are wanting to come in with those lies, with the heaviness, with the intent of hell. And we are going to come in and say, no, we are raising the standard of heaven. You will not prevail. Mm -hmm. And you will not prevail in our lives. You will not prevail in this nation or in this earth. Mm -hmm. And that is our stance. And we must rise in the fullness of that. I'm just getting something on that right now. We have to be so postured in the Lord mm. and in the kingdom because yeah. we're of a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Right. So we're not of the world. We're in it, but we're not of it. And so what goes on, the shakings in the world, it doesn't have to affect us. It yeah. doesn't have to. And I'm thinking of Goshen. That's what was coming mm -hmm. to me as you were talking. When, um, when God was releasing judgments against the idols of Egypt, um, his people were in Goshen. So like when there was darkness over Egypt, there was mm -hmm. light in Goshen. When there was death over the um, uh, firstborn in Egypt, there was life in Goshen. And so we need to know that we are in Christ, mm -hmm. postured in him mm -hmm. for for victory. So if we yeah. feel oppression, yeah. that is just a discernment of what's going on in the world, the warfare, um, that is our key to rise up and take our place, mm -hmm. take our position, because we personally are in Christ. And we always, of course, mm -hmm. this is a given, <laughs> make sure that you don't have any glaring mm -hmm. sin going on in your life because that just sucks demons into mm -hmm. you, right? You don't want that. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. crazy, right? So get rid of that. The blood of Jesus will take care of that for you. Amen. But just don't choose that walk because yeah. it's ridiculous because that will pull you into the kingdom that can be shaken. Right. That we're of a kingdom that cannot be. Right. So we live in this really strong place, but then we start seeing the oppression that's out there. Maybe right. we pick up an inner spirit right. on it. Um, sometimes we can feel what's going on, but it's not happening to us. Right. It is in the spirit realm that we can take dominion over and see the breakthrough. It's so important it's to remember so important. that. It's so important. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'd like to introduce to you our guest today. Her name is Kate McGovern, and Kate is part of the Women in Ministry Network, and she is a builder in the kingdom on many different platforms, and one of those is a very strong prayer ministry. So I asked Kate if she would speak to us today on spiritual posture and the posture of prayer. Hi, Patricia and Michelle and Women on the Rise. I am so excited to be with you today. I'm humbled and I'm honored. Well, I'm excited to share with you some strategies today, national strategies on praying for our nation. But first of all, if you haven't signed up for the firewallusa.com that Teresa has, Patricia has launched, I encourage you to get signed up for that. We're seeing great fruit in our area of women that are taking it out to coffee shops and parks and people are coming up and even asking them for prayer. That's, that is just so exciting. I just want to share a quick testimony before I give you some strategies. And that is it started 26 years ago. I remember throwing myself on the floor and saying to the Lord, there's got to be more than this, Lord. I want more. I see signs, wonders, and miracles in your word, but they're not happening in my life. And so the Lord spoke to me, Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, 
my daughter, let me change you. And I said, change me, Lord, change me. I don't even know what needs to be changed. I guess I had so many blind spots. But the Lord began to ignite my life in a prayer life that was launched. He brought in another prayer partner and we began to pray weekly. Well, pretty soon we started what was called Friday prayer and we opened it up to anyone who was hungry to pray. Well, pretty soon people were coming in and getting filled with the Holy Spirit, getting saved, healings, miracles. God began to give us mandates on prayer for our government. We'd see them in the newspaper or on national news the next day and prayer got super exciting. We saw hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people and it's been going for 25 years coming through, getting touched, being released into their ministries and what God has for them. And so I just want to ignite your heart today in the power of prayer and what God does. When I said more, I had no idea how much more God wanted to do. Before the pandemic started, the Lord spoke two things to me. The first one was, my daughter, don't look down, look up. Look to where your help comes from. Your help comes from me. It comes from the Lord. When you look up, you'll go higher. When you look down, you're going to go down. Then the Lord began to speak to me about preposterous miracles. He said, I am about to do preposterous miracles. Well, I had to look up the word preposterous to find out what it was all about. And it's actually ridiculous miracles, miracles that just don't make sense to man. And what the Lord spoke to me, he said, it was ridiculous to man when I opened up the Red Sea and I shut the mouths of the lions. All the things that I've done were absolutely preposterous. And that's what I'm about to do. I'm about to do preposterous miracles. Well, then once the pandemic started, the Lord spoke and said, there's a sinister spirit that's been released here upon the earth and upon the media. And I want you to begin to take a authority over that. And I want you to begin to release the truth of my word. Well, sinister is always making it look like evil things happening or about to happen. And so we began to take authority over the sinister spirit and release the light of heaven into every place that sinister spirit had been working. Then the next thing that the Holy Spirit spoke to us was that he gave us the word misinformation. Yes, her name is actually Miss information and she is bringing information that is missed it's wrong and it's causing confusion in the american people and the believers of god and she is having havoc there so the lord said begin to take authority over misinformation and begin to release the truth and the power of my word into every circumstance and situation in the seven mountains and into our government, into the leaders of our government. Begin to pray the blood of Jesus over the offices in our government in Jesus name. And so we've begun to do all that. And there's a wonderful scripture in Romans that I'd like to share with you. And it says this out of the message Bible in Romans 12, one. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you, Take your everyday, ordinary life, your eating, sleeping, walk around life, and place it before God as an offering. And then embrace what God does for, the, does for you, the best thing. And don't become so well-adjusted to culture that you would fit into it without thinking. Instead, fix your attention, look up, on God, and you'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what He wants for you and you will begin to eventually bring out that God life that he has developed well-formed for you in full maturity. Wow, I love that word. And I also love Luke 18, one that says, pray and never give up. Be like that widow going to the unjust judge and she was fighting, fighting, fighting for her justice. We have a just, merciful and righteous God and he has strategies for all of us Decreeing and declaring God's word is so powerful, and that's what we do when God gives us things by the Spirit. I just want to encourage you today that uh, God wants to use you, and maybe you don't have a prayer partner, ask God for one. Maybe he's asking you to start a small prayer group in your home. I had never I, idea that this prayer meeting would go for 25 years, but I do know this, little prayer, little power. Much prayer, much power. More prayer, more power. Do you know that the dynamo lives inside of you? The dynamite power, God, Jesus himself, and that dynamo wants to speak through you. So I encourage you, begin to pray, begin to connect, come together, we're better together than apart, and begin to get your strategies by listening to let the Holy Spirit guide you and what he's wanting you to take strategies into the throne of God and dwell with him. God bless you and thank you. Bless you, women on the rise. 
Thank you, Kate. I love those strategies so that you've good. laid out. And I love the testimony that you brought of, you know, you, you just started with you and then you had another one. And I know from talking with you and, and relationship with you that those prayer meetings have become just amazing. Yeah. And to the point that you are affecting government, literally, uh, you have senators and congressmen and uh, different government officials that are coming into your prayer meetings asking for prayer. So you are very strategically placed, you are hearing strategy of heaven, and you're releasing it and impacting our government and our nation. It's so good. Thank you, Kate. And praying for our government is so important mm. right now. And I love the administration that we have right now invites prayer. Yeah. And, um, and, and I think that's amazing. And we can't take that for granted because um, they're very serious about having people speak into their life. They've got prophets. They've got prayer warriors, intercessors. I know that I'm on a number of different initiatives out of uh, the White House and, and out of D.C. area. Um, so, I mean, this is a seriously mm -hmm. God-focused administration. And I just want to put a plug in here right now, Michelle, because at the time of this broadcast, of course, we're pre-election. Mm -hmm. It is so important uh, that you pray for that election. Yeah. And Kevin Zadai was saying in his interview with uh, Sid Roth that when he went into heaven, the Lord said that we have to vote in heaven and vote in the earth. Mm. So the way we vote in heaven is to pray yes. for the president to get in. And yeah. Sid Roth was saying that we have to just look at a few issues, like do not vote any party in that is pro-abortion. That's right. Because if you do, you have their blood on your hands. That's right. And he said, I don't want the blood on my hands. I've got enough things to deal with. I don't want no. that, you yeah. know? And uh, same with uh, pro-family. Mm -hmm. Like, um, don't, don't vote for parties that are pro-gay marriage mm -hmm. and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. We have a say. We, we can release authority into the nation. And so we need to be mm -hmm. very uh, proactive with this right now. Pray, pray, pray for sure. Make sure your vote is in heaven, but make sure you vote in the earth. And could you um, spread the word mm -hmm. around? E even if you get some kickbacks, you know, we just have to go not for the man or the woman. We have to go for the values. That's right. We have to go for the, the things that are important to God, for pro-Israel, for pro-life, for pro-family, for pro-church. These are the things that we have to fight for and protect, and especially for uh, conservative um, uh, judges and the mm -hmm. Supreme Court. We have a lot of work ahead of us. We, yeah. we, we need to overturn uh, the um, abortion stands in our nation. Mm -hmm. That is going to happen. And Kevin and Zadai also had, saw something about that in heaven, which was very encouraging. But come on, this is a really important season. And uh, Kate, I just so respect you yeah. and yeah. what you're doing. You are a stellar woman of mm -hmm. God. And, you know, the women in our network, I'm so proud of them because they are amazing. <laughs> and of course, Michelle directs the, the Women in Ministry oh. Network. And and um, I just love seeing our women grow and Me expand. Too. And if you're interested in becoming part of the network, if you see in yourself a passion for ministering to the Lord, it could be mm -hmm. in intercession, it could be in your family, it could be in the education realm, uh, business realm, mm -hmm. uh, government, media, arts and entertainment, whatever, we would love to have you join this mm -hmm. great company of women that is proclaiming glad tidings. And more than ever, God is needing mm -hmm. uh, women to rise up yes. and to take that stand. And so there's so much camaraderie. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have, you know, groups where every woman in our network has someone that they can relate to in a group that mm -hmm. they can relate to in the Facebook, of course, mm -hmm. and the and all the um, different things that we do. It's yeah. just beautiful. So, yeah. so um, go to patriciaking.com, actually, and there's a women tab mm -hmm. there, W-I-M-N, and uh, check it out because we would love to have you in our network as this next move. There's a big move. Mm -hmm coming. Yep. I can feel it. We're getting yep. ready for it. Yep. And I know that our Women in Ministry Network are getting ready. We're going to mm -hmm. push them forward. We also have commissioning slash ordination, yes. which we have an event coming up soon. September. Yeah. Yep. In September. And, you know, it's going to be amazing. You can uh, watch online. 
some of the meetings or find out more about that by uh, going to the events page. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, we're going to be ordaining some of yeah. our women as we do every I year. I love it. And, yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. It is. And you know, you're talking about things that are coming and we are, we are on a precipice of some things. And coming back again to that place of our posture. And when you are looking at something that's coming and it's like be in that posture of I'm ready. Yep. I'm, 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 I've got my stance. And, and there's a certain stance that you have when mm -hmm. you are prepared for something and you're solid in your stance, right? So take that stance and, and have your, and the place where that is strong is your stance in the word of God and in his heart mm -hmm. for us and you. And there's a scripture out of Ephesians it says, never doubt God's mighty power to work in you to accomplish all that he has said. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request and your most unbelievable dream and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. That is something that we can stand on. And when we're talking about prayer and the posture of prayer mm -hmm. and you know the our faith in that and those in those yeah. four postures that you talked about, those that is what we can wrap ourselves around is the truth of his word. So true. I've got a decree to set us off today. So you will arise. You are shaking off your dust and breaking the shackles of bondage from your yes. neck. Jehovah is the God of your increasing salvation. Your heart is wrapped into his and your gaze is set upon the path before you. With fixed purpose, you look straight ahead. You yield freely and fully to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit. You abandon the cravings of your self-life and step into the full freedom of the Spirit of God. Awesome. Thank you so much for being with us today, Women on the Rise. And live up to that name. Rise up, women. Take hold of what is in front of you and go forward in the word of the Lord.